Hey folks, it's your main man Sabado. Over the past period of time, I've been talking a lot about things that have shaped my perspective to help me be prepared for the moment that I started to think about early retirement. So when I got there, I was prepared. And today I want to talk about five books that really were fundamental in shaping my path. I'm not stating that a book is going to give you all the answers. I'm not going to state that a book is going to give you Dr. X's magic elixir. I never say that anything is going to do that. But what I do think is that when the time comes, we want to be prepared for that moment. And these are some of the books that help me prepare for this moment that I'm in today. Um, so I have a successful journey. So let's jump into it. The first book I want to talk about, and I've talked about it quite a bit, and I'll continue to talk about it, are The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People being proactive, thinking win-win, and all of the rest of them. They're, it's a phenomenal book. It gave really good, light, easy-to-read perspective and helped me understand the importance of putting together a personal mission statement uh, because it's a hard way. It's, it's hard to get someplace if you don't know where you're going. And part of what your mission statement does is it helps you understand what it is that you're actually trying to do. I speak about it all the time. My personal mission statement is to uplift the human condition in any way that I can. I didn't know how I was going to do it specifically when I put together that mission statement. But when I look back at the body of work that I call my life, I've done exactly that. I've had the opportunity to put myself in position to help a bunch of people in a lot of different ways and continue to do that even into my retirement. The second book is The Nine Steps of Financial Freedom by Susie Orman. It's a book that was printed years ago, back in the 90s, maybe early 2000s. And I'll tell you, that book was fundamental because what it did for me is knowing just the basics of a checking account and a savings account was good, but it wouldn't have been enough to get me to where I am today. And so the nine steps to financial freedom dive into topics such as the living trust. So how do you protect your um, resources, uh, the different types of retirement accounts, the importance of what's called dollar cost averaging, which means instead of trying to time the market. I think a lot of people think they have to try to time the market. So instead of trying to time the market, you take and invest over time. And what you find is, is you get all of the returns. You lose some in the short term, but in the long term, you always come up, a, come out a lot better. It's a lot less of a risky strategy than let's say trying to time the market, because the reality is not many people do that well. Just ask all the day traders that found themselves on the bad side of it in 2008. And then again, when COVID hit, the next book I talk about is uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's a famous book. It's been out there. People talk about how to win friends and influence people. Uh, but this book is was really fundamental. And what I thought was important about this book is it started to get you thinking about, got me thinking about the ways that you can help get things that you want working with other people because working with other people are important, but doing it in such a way that everybody's meeting their goals as opposed to you just meeting your goals. And one of the things Dale Carnegie does is he does a really nice job of helping understand the, the true nature of people and understanding that every human being has something in them that makes them a diamond. And he talks about in the coal mine, if you look, if you're mining for diamonds, a diamond really looks like a rough stone when you mine initially mine it. But as you cut it and you shape it and you polish it, it turns into a valuable stone and, and people are really the same way. And so if you treat people along those lines, then you find yourself able to get results working with and through people that you wouldn't have been able to get if you were just barking out orders with them and actually having them feel good about it and meeting their own goals in the process. Um, the, the next one, the 17 indisputable laws of teamwork by John Maxwell. In this book, I think it's 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 phenomenal because what John Maxwell does is he takes 17 laws and he breaks those up into stories, 17 distinct stories with 17 distinct different themes. And each of those helps drive home um, the the idea of why teamwork is so important. And he talks about it a lot from the standpoint of leadership, but leadership really isn't just about work, but leadership is about how we live our lives the way that we deal with people and the, our approach to how we uh, achieve a goal. And so this book, I think, is phenomenal for people in business. I think for those of you that are looking to retire, because as 
Much as I like to talk about my retirement journey, my retirement journey wasn't just mine. It was all the people that um, I've had the opportunity to interact with that helped me get there. And I, I hope I illustrate that through the stories that I tell and, and some of the conversations that we have in the comments. But it's never just one. It's always a collective. And the last one is there's a book by a guy named Richard Pryor. And his autobiography is called Prior Convictions and Other Life Sentences. And the reason I put this one in here is I read this book when it was first published. In fact, I bought the book about a year after I first read it. When I read it, I sat down inside of a Barnes and Noble for a few hours and just started reading the book. And it was so compelling because what Richard Pryor does in this is he starts from the beginning of his journey. And when he was a kid growing up, his mother was a, uh, he grew up in a brothel and he talks about growing up in the brothel and then his whole story of how he got from where he was when he was a little kid in Pier Peoria, Illinois, up to where he eventually became, which really, when, when you look at comedy, I think anybody would be hard pressed to say that Richard Pryor isn't the GOAT. But Richard Pryor wasn't the GOAT because he was silly. Richard Pryor wasn't the GOAT because he told stupid stories. Richard Pryor was the GOAT because what he did is he took things that were going on in his own life and talked about those in a way that, sure, they were funny in how he told the story, but when you sat back and you looked at it, they were pretty serious, um, pretty serious things. So, and helps us understand and shape how he sees the world. And so, so again, I wanted to keep this one brief and to the point because I know that a lot of you out there are wondering, this is great, I love this content, but I want to have something concrete that I can walk away and do tomorrow. And I think most of us have access to Amazon and we can go and get an ebook. We could get a book on tape. We can get a, a regular uh, bound book to, to read about different perspectives. And I think the path to early retirement is really shaped by the perspectives that we have as opposed to just the actions that we do. So on that note, uh, I'm just going to ask that if you like this comment, you find it helpful or useful in any way, please feel free to, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And, um, on that note, I will talk to you soon. Have a good rest of your day.